It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, okay, here, this next question is from RKL. And uh, RKL said, how does my pension affect my savings rate? I will have a pension equal to 63% of my final average salary. That sounds amazing. Uh, I currently save 20% pre-tax and 3% Roth. I'm 36 years old and I make $140,000 a year. Oh, that's a great pension. Young, high income, fantastic pension, really healthy savings rate. Should RKL change anything or should he or she change the way they're thinking about retirement? And what was the age again? 36. Oh, man. Because I was going to say, because I've, I've shared the story multiple times that I was trying to save early and often mm-hmm. so that in my 40s, I could take my foot off of the accelerator. Sure. And um, I love hearing about somebody who's obviously a financial mutant mm-hmm. crushing it, but also has the incredible opportunity of having kind of a legacy benefit, like a pension that is going to be another great and a 63% tool in their pension. financial planning and, and financial independence tool, um, tool belt. So this is <laughs> kind of turn that instead of toolbox. <laughs> I said tool belt like he's Batman. But um, here, here's what I think is interesting is that this gets into a little more advanced planning mm-hmm. and the fact that I still love the, the 20 to 25% gross income savings rate, but I think that it gets more nuanced when you're trying to figure out what do I need to actually retire to be financially independent? Because you'll find as you get deeper into what's your number for financial independence, it's great to use income when you have in your 20s and 30s because you just don't know what your future self is going to look like. It's not like you can look at yourself in the mirror and go, future self? What How do you much am I like spend to do in my, when I'm in my late 40s, early 50s, when I think I'm retiring or even 60s? So that's why we give the guidance and in income. I know we get some flack from the fire movement on that because, but, but I think as you progress into your planning, it does become as you're landing the airplane, as we often say, mm-hmm. five, approximately five years before retirement, you want to start basing everything off of your living mm-hmm. expenses because you are going to know what yourself looks like five years sure. in the future. And so somebody who has a pension that covers 60 plus percent of their current income, first of all, you're already checking the box that when we do a lot of modeling, especially somebody who makes six figures, 60% is going to be extremely powerful, especially if you think about down the road, you probably have access to Social Security Mm -hmm. plus the Medicare covering your health care costs. You don't have to save anymore at that point. That is way powerful. So it's one of those things where I think you take your living expenses in retirement, your anticipated living expenses, but you're going to subtract out all the given income streams that will be coming your way, including pension. Mm -hmm. And then what's left of that number is what you now need your portfolio to be able to generate for you. That's how you kind of break this off into different chunks to, to, to figure out how successful or what your likelihood of success is going to be in retirement. So let me play Darth Vader here a little bit, because Brian, you always do a great job of telling our young folks, hey, enjoy the present, live life now, don't be a miser, don't save all of your money and let your life get away from it. And I agree with all of those things. Mm-hmm. But let's say that RKL goes to this exercise and he's like, man, I'm going to have a 63% pension and all this, and I know how much I think I'm going to spend. So I really only need about a 7 or 8% savings rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my savings rate down to 7 or 8%, and I'm just going to start spending like a banshee. I think what you're saying is, you know, that's you'll, it'll probably be okay, assuming your numbers are right. But don't miss here and think that you have to do that. My opinion is, if you're doing the things you want to be doing, and you're not having to sacrifice so much, and you still have a healthy lifestyle, you're still enjoying the present, there's nothing wrong, especially at 36 years old, to be saving aggressively, to be building your wealth more quickly than you need to be building it. Because what that's going to do is as you get into your 40s and as you get into your 50s, it's going to give you maximum flexibility, maximum options. I don't think that just because the math suggests, oh, I should stop spending money, I mean, I should stop saving money, that you should go out and try to f- find ways to start spending more. Would you agree with that? You're going to fight me I, I do, but I've got a caveat. It just hit me. If I was doing your financial plan, here's something I would probably go do. Go to... to PB Pension Benefit Guarantee, mm-hmm. PBGC.gov. That's the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. That's the same thing like FDIC insurance, government protection. It's a backstop in case your your provider of your pension goes kaput. Yep. You know, figure out what the maximum guaranteed benefit, because somebody who's making six figures and has a 62% pension, 
you're above the PBGC sure. coverage. I would use that number in your calculation instead of your full calculation while you're young. Now, look, five years into close to retirement, I think you can use your full pension because you'll be close enough. We'll know the financial solvency of the company. But this far out, use the maximum PBGC benefit as you're backing into formula because I get nervous. I saw this with Delta. Yep. Remember, we're from Atlanta originally. Delta's headquartered in Atlanta. We had a lot of Delta pilots that had six-figure pensions. Mm, big ones. Um, great 401ks. And then the 2008 crisis happened, and Delta was like, yeah, I don't think we're going to honor all those pensions the same way. So they, they did some some – they kind of shed a lot of that responsibility. And I think a lot of companies are constantly looking for ways. It's just part of our where we are now in the world that I would just be, try to put some backstops or conservative sure. assumptions in there so that you don't do – like because Bo had a great point. I don't want a 36-year-old saying, man, I'm in such a great shape. Let's pull this thing down to 7% from the 20-plus percent that I'm currently at. And then you get there and go, they changed the rules on me. What what happened? Let's put some conservative assumptions in there. And that pension benefit um, guarantee could be a, a big part of that equation. And look, this is the fun part of being a financial advisor. We have a lot of clients now. Mm -hmm who have pensions that are coming in and between pensions and maybe Social Security, other sources of income, thought, like, man, all of my living needs are met. So I have this large seven-figure portfolio over, over here that I'm not even having to tap. Well, that's great. Well, then they get to think about really exciting things they can do for family trips or once-in-a-lifetime opportunities legacy or planning. giving or legacy planning. Again, it affords you opportunities to do a different level of planning. I don't think that that's a, a bad yeah. thing necessarily. Um, Great question. 